18-year-old Bronny James, the son of basketball great LeBron James, was rushed to a Los Angeles hospital after suffering cardiac arrest while practicing at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. This happened on Monday. He is reportedly out of the ICU. That didn't stop Elon Musk on Tuesday from tweeting that the 18-year-old's heart condition may have been caused by the COVID vaccine. Isn't that great that Elon Musk would opine on the health condition of somebody he doesn't know? Musk took to Twitter and linked the COVID vaccine to myocarditis, prompting Congressman Ted Lieu to tweet, Dear Elon Musk, you have access to vast resources Please consult some. You don't know if Mr. James even has myocarditis. More importantly, the American Heart Association has stated COVID-19 infection poses higher risk for myocarditis than vaccines. X. 325,000 Teamsters driving for UPS were scheduled to go on strike August 1st, but it now looks like a tentative agreement has been Reach. The Teamsters will continue to work throughout August as the rank and file reviews the new contract and votes on whether or not to accept it. Voting begins August 3rd, ends on the 22nd. Ron DeSantis and his motorcade were in a traffic accident early Tuesday morning on their way to a campaign event in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The car in front of DeSantis reportedly stopped suddenly, and DeSantis's car plowed right into it. Always nice to see the most homophobic governor in America rear-ending somebody. By the way, nobody was injured. Actor Johnny Depp was reportedly found unconscious in a Budapest hotel, forcing his band, The Hollywood Vampires, to cancel their performance in that country. There are reports that a member of the band attributed Depp's health condition to excessive alcohol consumption. Johnny Depp likes to drink. Hmm, I didn't know that. Climate activist Greta Thunberg was arrested on Monday protesting an oil terminal in the southern city of Malmo, Sweden. Earlier that day, Thunberg was fined by a Swedish court for disobeying police orders last month at an identical protest in front of the same oil terminal. Nice to see someone in Sweden doing something besides burning a Koran. That seems to be the big thing now in the Scandinavian countries, burning Korans. Burning Korans, that can't be good for the environment. Meanwhile, right-wing activists in Denmark, who call themselves the Danish Patriots, staged a Koran burning outside of the Iraqi embassy in Copenhagen, because what could be more important? What else do people in Denmark have to worry about? That prompted 1,000 Iraqis to surround the Danish embassy in Baghdad. The Danish patriots staging a Koran burning in Copenhagen. What better way to show your love of country than setting fire to somebody's holy book? Good on you. Good on you. The Washington Post is reporting that during last month's coup staged by the Wagner Group, in which a private army of mercenaries seized Russian military buildings and almost marched on Moscow. During that coup, Vladimir Putin was reportedly paralyzed by fear and indecision. According to reporting in the Washington Post, Putin, who is now 70, was unable to make any decisions for hours, leaving his military confused and frightened. Here in the United States, the Intercept is reporting that the United States Border Patrol in Arizona is placing as many as 50 migrants in cages outside, leaving them to swelter in triple-digit temperatures. Arizona heat reached record highs in the past week. It got up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit in some spots. The Biden administration warned Texas Governor Greg Abbott to stop lining the Rio Grande with barbed wire buoys, which the Justice Department warns is a health hazard, leaving children and pregnant mothers bloodied and susceptible to drowning. Texas Governor Greg Abbott responded to the warning from the Biden Justice Department by saying, I'll see you in court. Well, on Monday, the Biden Justice 
department responded. They're taking Greg Abbott to court in an attempt to get those buoys removed, calling them inhumane. But of course, isn't that the entire point of the buoys, to be inhumane? As we reported last week, local Texas Border Patrol officers, these are not federal uh, patrol border officers, these are Texas Border Patrol officers working for Greg Abbott. There are reports now that the state of Texas has ordered their Border Patrol officers to throw children and nursing mothers into the Rio Grande and order them to swim back to Mexico. Texas Border Patrol officers were also ordered to deny nursing mothers, migrants, children, ordered to deny them drinking water in triple-digit heat. President Lula da Silva of Brazil, he's the far-right leader who took office back in January following an attempted coup by supporters of Bolsonaro, who lost his re-election bid. Imagine that a right-wing president like Bolsonaro losing re-election and his uh, supporters storming the Capitol. Glad nothing like that ever happened here in America. Well, President Lula is reversing Bolsonaro's attempts to arm, fill the nation of Brazil with armed citizens. Our National Rifle Association was working with Bolsonaro down in Brazil to loosen gun laws and get as many handguns into the the population. In 2019 alone, one million guns were sold to Brazilians. Well, now President Lula is reversing this conspiracy to arm the populace. Lula has issued a decree limiting the number of guns that can be owned by one citizen. Well, where am I? We're going to cut through some of that and go to this story. Congratulations, congratulations to our idiot friends down in Florida. There are reports that water temperatures in the Florida Keys topped 101 degrees Fahrenheit on Monday. Time for a fishing vacation to the Keys because the marlin comes already cooked. This is a record. Take that, Persian Gulf. Water in Florida is now the hottest anywhere on the planet, beating out the previous record in Kuwait. Florida water now is hotter than Kuwait. And Kuwait, they never reached triple digits like we did on Monday down in Florida. To give you a perspective, a typical hot tub is on the low end 100 degrees. It can go as high as 104, but, you know, 101 degrees is a comfortable uh, hot tub. And that's what the Florida Keys are right now, a hot tub. Swimmers describe the water as feeling warm and syrupy. Wow. Good job. Good job, Florida. Here's the good news, though, about uh, warming oceans. This is uh, the good news the warmer the ocean gets down in Florida, the, the warmer the oceans get, uh, the less intense the hurricanes become. Actually, the opposite is true. Uh, the hotter the ocean, the more frequent and more intense the hurricanes. But since we're all going to be dead in six months, why not just lie and tell everyone things are going to be just fine? Things are going to be fine. Nothing to worry about, kids. Nothing to worry about. Two years ago, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill sponsored by the fossil fuel industry forbidding cities and counties in Florida from ordering utility companies to abandon oil and gas in favor of renewable energy. Thanks to Ron DeSantis in Florida is against the law for a city to get off fossil fuels. Meanwhile, thanks to intensifying hurricanes, homeowner insurance in Florida is the most expensive in America with many customers saying it's next to impossible to get any. The average homeowner insurance in America is about $1,700 a year. In Florida, thanks to Ron DeSantis and climate change, if you're lucky, homeowner's insurance is about $7,000, a record to run on Governor Ron DeSantis. Meanwhile, the Florida governor's presidential campaign seems to have stalled. 
DeSantis raised $20 million from large donors in the second quarter of this year, but he appears to have blown through half of it and has been forced to fire 38 of his 90 full-time staffers. By the way, no other Republican candidate had as many full-time staffers as Ron DeSantis. He's had to fire about half of them this week and uh, 90 full-time staffers. And as you can see, DeSantis really knows how to bring out the best with his leadership style. Another problem for DeSantis is it's not a grassroots campaign. His donors are wealthy and they've all maxed out what they can give. They can't give anymore, which means as we enter the third quarter, Ron DeSantis has to find new wealthy donors, but it's doubtful they will materialize as DeSantis continues to crater in the polls. You know, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but Looks like Americans don't want to vote for an unlikable fascist who has destroyed the state he governed and plans to do the same for the rest of America. You would think it would be the other way around. You would think Americans would say, hey, this guy Ron DeSantis has nothing but contempt for ordinary Americans. He's a bully. He's arrogant, incompetent. He's destroyed Florida's economy, the schools. He shit the bed on COVID. And even though he's a fascist, Florida has one of the highest crime rates in the country. He's a complete failure because he spends most of his time sucking up to the gas and oil lobbyists while persecuting black people and members of the LGBTQ community. This is the blueprint for change my country so desperately needs. Why aren't people voting for him? Well, when Rand DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, isn't terrorizing members of the LGBTQ community, he's making it impossible for African Americans to vote. And he's insisting that critical race not be taught in Florida schools. He also insists that African American studies isn't a real thing. As I mentioned on yesterday's show, that's one of seven moves from the authoritarian playbook. Ron DeSantis is a dyed-in-the-wool fascist. He is working off the authoritarian playbook, which we talked about on yesterday's show. One of the moves in the authoritarian playbook is marginalize vulnerable communities. When you go back to Mussolini, Hitler, Franco, all the way up right now to present-day Turkey, Poland, Russia, Hungary, and Brazil until Lula took over in January. If you look at all these fascist authoritarian regimes, one of the standard moves is to marginalize vulnerable communities, to use them first as scapegoats for your failed policies. That, that's the first thing you do. Fascists are failures. They need scapegoats. So they blame marginalized communities for the immiseration of the entire populace. You, you can't blame your own policies that cater solely to the rich and powerful, which leaves the entire country wanting. You can't say, hey, you know, I'm giving all the government largesse to the rich and powerful. That's why you're broke and suffering. You need to find a scapegoat. You need to find the marginalized, the blacks, the Arabs, the Hispanics, the Jews, the Sikhs, the LGBTQ community. And that's exactly what fascist Ron DeSantis is doing in Florida. He's marginalizing vulnerable communities, right? And because he's really unpopular, because fascists always are unpopular, you have to marginalize vulnerable communities so they're too afraid to speak out and most importantly, vote. Vote. You want to scare marginalized communities from turning out the vote. Fascists like DeSantis or Trump or Hitler are unlikable. Hitler, believe it or not, was not popular. He won his elections with a plurality of votes, okay? He couldn't muster a majority in, in, uh, in, in the Reichstag. So he had to resort to illegal means to take power. He won his elections 
with the plurality of the votes because the majority knew, I'm talking about Hitler, they knew he was dangerous and wrong. The same way Trump lost, lost both elections, at least when it came to the popular vote. America knew Trump was an idiot. DeSantis, well, you know, he was reelected last year by a large margin, but that's deceptive because he succeeded before that election in marginalizing the black community. He scrubbed the voter rolls in Florida. He created election police in Florida to intimidate. Uh, they made false arrests of African Americans for trying to vote, even though they were legally permitted to vote. Have you ever been arrested? If you've ever been arrested, you're not going to risk another arrest by uh, by voting, if if it means having to spend a couple of days in jail. We all know that the vast preponderance of former prisoners in Florida are people of color. And Florida, a couple of years ago, the good people of Florida, there are good people in Florida, they just can't vote. The good people of Florida voted to restore voting rights for ex-prisoners. And so the Republicans, Ron DeSantis, realized if ex-prisoners can vote, there's no way I'm getting reelected. So the Republicans in the state legislature, they reversed the will of the people because that's what fascists do. And they attached financial requirements in order for ex-prisoners to get their vote back. Fines had to be paid. If you owed the prison any money, you couldn't vote. And that chills voter turnout. It marginalizes voter communities. Uh, vulnerable, vul it marginalizes vulnerable communities, especially people of color in Florida. So it guaranteed that Ron DeSantis, who is disliked in Florida, it guaranteed that he was going to win big in November of last year because he made it next to impossible for the people who know he's a tyrant to vote against him. That's how unpopular fascists win at the ballot box. And they know that's the only way they can win. It doesn't matter if you're a fascist, if you're an authoritarian. We saw it with January 6th and Donald Trump. It doesn't matter how you win, just so long as you win. And one of the ways, one of the ways DeSantis is tormenting African Americans is through his hand-picked State Board of Education, which mandated this month that when teaching Florida children about slavery, I, I, I'm sure you've all read about this, and I, and I wish I were making this up. When teaching children about slavery in Florida, it is imperative to teach that slavery wasn't all bad. In Florida, teachers must now tell children that while slavery had its downside, it also had its upside. Black people also benefited by learning new skills like farming, sewing, and construction, which, as we all know, those slaves couldn't have possibly learned if they were left in Africa, because we all know that Africans don't know how to farm, make clothes, or build. If Europeans didn't stack them like lumber on boats, literally stack them like lumber on boats, uh, one third of them died on the Middle Passage when they arrived in America. They were sold at auction. Mothers were separated from their babies. Fathers were separated from their babies. They were whipped, raped, and killed. And if Europeans, if American slaveholders had ignored the Africans and never shipped them, to America, we all know then that nobody in Africa would have ever learned how to grow crops, sew clothes, or build housing. Thank you, slave trade. Hey, you know what they say, no pain, no gain, right? They are literally, what is going on in Florida, they are literally justifying slavery. They are literally saying, yeah, it had its downsides, you know, but it's kind of like a summer internship at Goldman Sachs. You don't get paid. We make you work incredibly long hours, and it's a little abusive. You're going to get yelled at, sexually harassed. But if you can survive this, 
you can work anywhere. You survive Goldman Sachs or slavery. There are skills that will stick with you for the rest of your life. That's what slavery was. Tough love. I know you hate it now, but trust me, somewhere down the line, you'll thank me. They believe this, by the way. They have to believe it because they're demented sociopaths who have to justify their whatever station they have left in the world. I just spat. Uh, I hate saying uh, saliva on the microphone. Anyway, I'm talking about this new Florida teaching standard that insists that kids have to be taught that African-Americans uh, received a personal benefit from slavery. Here is Ron DeSantis on the campaign trail, surrounded, as you can see, by a lot of black people. Uh, oh, I thought this was a negative. No, these are all white people. Here is Ron DeSantis singing the praises of slavery. Um, but I think um, I think what they're doing is I think that they're probably going to show um, some of the folks that eventually parlayed, uh, you know, being a blacksmith into into doing things later later in life. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, the slaveholders were so generous. It, it it was a vocational college. A plantation basically was a vocational college. And, you know, why aren't the slaveholders getting reparations? Why aren't the slaveholders getting some uh, thank you money for imparting all these special skills? Where's the thank you note from the NAACP? Why aren't the freed slaves thanking, thanking the, the, the South? Because we all know... Africans would have never learned to be blacksmiths had they stayed in Africa. Look, uh, just for the record, because Americans are stupid and racist, sometimes they don't recognize sarcasm. I'm being sarcastic. So just for the record, uh, the reason uh, Ron DeSantis just said that had it not been for slavery, the, the blacks would have never learned to be blacksmiths. So let's talk about that for a second. This is not sarcasm. This is the truth. And uh, the reason the Europeans invaded Africa in the 19th century was because of its rich deposits of valuable minerals, especially iron ore. Ron DeSantis is talking about how Americans taught these slaves to be blacksmiths. You effing racist! Uh, where was I? Uh, Europe discovered that uh, Africa was rich in valuable minerals. In the 19th century, they had iron ore. And how did the Europeans, how did the explorers come to understand that Africa had rich deposits of iron ore? Well, it was from all the intricate metal works that African tribes people had crafted by themselves extracting iron ore from beneath the ground that belonged to them. They didn't need Europeans or Americans to teach them how to be blacksmiths. It's the other way around, you effing ignoramus. Africans were master blacksmiths going back 2,500 years before white Europeans. There are archaeological sites, Ron DeSantis, in Cameroon, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Zimbabwe, and they provide incontrovertible evidence that you can see them in, Me in, in uh, museums if you ever bothered to visit Africa, Ron DeSantis. You would see proof that blacksmithing in sub-Saharan Africa was going on centuries before the white European learned how to do it. There was no benefit to black people being stacked like lumber and brought to America. There was no benefit, at least not for black people. There was a benefit for uh, slaveholders, free labor, but for black people, it was a holocaust and nothing. 
Nothing good comes from a Holocaust. Ron DeSantis, you racist. You racist. You authoritarian racist. He is the worst of, he's worse than Trump. He is. He's worse than Trump. Because at least Trump is funny. I mean, we're all going to die with Trump, but at least we'll be laughing. Here is Fox superstar Jesse Waters. He's the new superstar. And uh, he has Tucker Carlson's old time slot. That's the racist time slot. Here is Jesse Waters uh, talking about Florida's new curriculum back in Ron DeSantis up. And here he is defending uh, the new curriculum standard regarding the teaching of the benefits to slavery. Here is Jesse Waters. No one is arguing slaves benefited from slavery. No one is saying that. It's not true. They're teaching how black people developed skills during slavery in some instances that could be applied for their own personal benefit. Ah, okay. So, you know, I am a little hot under the collar. So Jesse Waters is saying nobody is teaching kids that black people benefited from slavery, right? That's, that's what you're saying, right? No one is arguing slaves benefited from slavery. No one is saying that. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty convincing. Okay, so, so you're saying black people didn't benefit from slavery, and that's not what, and you're saying that the Florida curriculum is not teaching that anybody benefited from slavery, that black people didn't benefit for, from slavery. That's what you're saying the Florida curriculum is teaching. Black people developed skills during slavery in some instances that could be applied for their own personal benefit. Okay, so you are saying black people were taught skills that they never would have learned had they not been stacked like wood onto those ships and brought to America. You just said it. You're saying black people were taught skills that they benefited from. It sounds like you're saying slaves benefited from slavery. No one is arguing slaves benefited from slavery. Oh, okay, because it sounded like you're saying that. What, what are you saying? Black people developed skills during slavery in some instances that could be applied for their own personal benefit. Yeah, that sounds like you're saying black people benefited from slavery. No one is arguing slaves benefited from slavery. Okay, but when you say it that way, it sounds so convincing. It sound, I mean, no, nobody is arguing that slaves benefited, benefited from slavery. You say it so loud and forcefully, so authoritatively. I guess I have to believe you when you say... Uh, that you and the state of Florida are not arguing that slaves benefited from slavery. Black people developed skills during slavery in some instances that could be applied for their own personal benefit. That sounds like you're saying they benefited from slavery. No one is arguing slaves benefited Uh, from slavery. Okay, and nobody is saying that Jesse Waters is a racist. Nobody is saying that. I'm just saying that Jesse Waters is trying to keep Tucker Carlson's audience by peddling the same precise, exact race, science and bigotry that Tucker Carlson did because Tucker Carlson is a racist and so is Jesse Waters and so is everybody who watches Fox News. But nobody is saying Jesse Waters is a racist. Nobody is saying that. Nobody is saying Fox News profits off the the distorting of America's perception of crime, as well as genetics, by convincing latent racists into becoming full-bore racists, by teaching them to blame black people for all their financial problems instead of the ruling class, which finances Fox News in order to distract poor white people into not realizing who's really responsible for all their anger and alienation. Nobody is calling Jesse Waters, a white white supremacist with blood on his hands. Nobody's saying that. 
I'm just saying Jesse Waters is a bigoted white supremacist with blood on his hands. But nobody's saying that Jesse Waters is a bigoted white supremacist with blood on his hands. Nobody's saying that. I'm just saying Jesse Waters is a bigoted white supremacist with blood on his hands who adds a warm, shiny patina to hate and cruelty. That's all I'm saying. You know, I'm not really good at this. I'm really not. I have a chip on my shoulder. And, you know, I hear Jesse Waters. And to me, because, you know, I'm a little paranoid, this sounds like gaslighting. It really does. It sounds like rich, powerful white people being racist and then blaming black people for thinking they're being victimized by a racist. This is classic. I mean, at least, you know, because I have a chip on my shoulder and I'm impossible to work with and I'm paranoid, I see gaslighting. You know, I see, you know, this is how sexual harassment works, anti-Arab, anti-gay, anti-Hispanic, anti-Semitism. This is how marginalized community, this is exactly how marginalized communities are constantly gaslit by rich and powerful white men, right? Yes, you know, if you want to keep count of all the cast members on my sketch comedy show, yeah, in the nearly 50 years we've been on the air, we've had few, if next to no, black comedians. But that's not because I'm a racist. I'm not a racist. It's just that I hired a black comedian in the 90s and he was difficult to work with. So I decided to stop casting black people on my sketch comedy show. That's not racism. I love black people. In fact, I hired a few. I gave it a try. I just had bad luck with black cast members. So I stopped hiring them. That's how these rich and powerful white men gaslight black people and other marginalized communities. And while they're gaslighting the marginalized communities, they're gaslighting themselves. Donald Trump, I mean, they believe their own bullshit. I, countless times I have heard Donald Trump say, I love the Jews. Love them. I love the Jews. In my casinos, I always say, put the Jews in the counting room. Trust me, that's who you want in the counting room, the Jews. He says that over and over, and Jews are supposed to go, gee, he likes us. Nobody is better at counting money than the Jews. In Los Angeles, I constantly hear liberals, blue state liberals in Los Angeles say, get a Mexican gardener. Nobody works harder. I don't want them coming into my house and using the toilet or dating my daughter, but I love the Mexicans. Love them. Nobody trims an oleander tree better than a Mexican. I will only hire a Mexican gardener. I love those people. I love the blacks. Love them. Love the blacks. I tried Chinese slaves. We tried white slaves, Irish slaves. Can't nothing. The blacks. I love the blacks. They make the best slaves. How can I be racist? All my slaves are black. Here's what's going on. We're being gaslit. We're being gaslit in the true definition of getting gaslit. A rich and powerful white man controls the narrative, abuses somebody, but creates a perception that the person being abused isn't seeing things clearly. What, what's going on in Florida, the, the teaching that slavery, you know, was a mixed bag. Ron DeSantis and the Florida Board of Education, what they are doing, they're consciously training young kids to live a lie. Don't deal with your past. Ignore it. That's the entire credo of the Republican Party. Ignore the past, ignore our country's past, and ignore your own past. Slavery wasn't America's original sin. This is how the Republicans are training 
their, their children to think that slavery isn't America's original sin. It was a necessary step in the evolutionary development of both capitalism and black people. Right? It's not just the teaching of slavery. It's also deny your sexuality. Deny who you are. Don't be gay. Don't acknowledge your sexuality or which gender you identify with. Live a lie. Live a lie. Stay in the closet. Pretend everything is okay. That's what make America great again. That's what it means. Live a lie. Let's go back to the 50s when white people pretended everything was okay. Blacks, women, the LGBTQ, they knew the truth. But back in the 50s, white people lived a lie. They pretended everything was okay. And that's what Jason Aldean, Donald Trump, Jesse Waters, Donald Trump, and the entire Republican Party is trying to get us back to normal times when white people got to live a lie. And when you live a lie, when you lie to yourself about yourself or about your country, it comes out in other ways. It comes, it always does. When you lie to yourself about yourself or your country, it comes out in horrific ways. When you construct a series of lies to justify your evil lifestyle, eventually it crumbles around you. But you'll still pretend it's all okay because that's all you've been trained to do is live a lie. So it's all crumbling around you and you live a lie and you ignore the truth. So you drink, you cheat, you hide. And eventually you just disappear. You sink into yourself. When a human being or a nation constructs a mythology about who and what they really are, it leads to insanity. That's a fact. When a human being or a nation constructs a mythology about who and what they really are, it leads to insanity. Lindsey Graham is insane. Lindsay, we all know Lindsey Graham is insane because we all know who he is and what he's trying to deny to himself and others. We all know it. He knows it. And he knows we all know it. But he can't bring himself to say it. And that's why he's clinically insane. Look at Lindsey Graham. Watch him on the Sunday morning talk shows. I don't know if he's a hopeless alcoholic or not. I'm pretty sure he's an alcoholic. I don't know if he's a hopeless alcoholic, but he sure acts and sounds like a hopeless alcoholic. The way he lashes out for no reason, defends people who abuse him. People, you know, he defends Donald Trump. This is, by the actual definition of insanity, insanity. When you deny who you are and the truth about you, it breeds insanity. It always does. The more Florida lives a lie, the more it becomes insane. It's living a lie about slavery and it's living a lie about, uh, about the LGBTQ community. You're not allowed to be black, gay, transgender, <clears throat> excuse me, in Florida. It forces people to live a lie. Uh, you're teaching kids mythologies about slavery. It forces them to live a lie. And that creates insanity. Florida's insane. A Florida man. A Florida man. That is a meme. A Florida man. When you read that a shirtless zombie wearing leotards was freebasing bath salts and then hopped out of his speeding pickup truck and jumped on top of a police officer and began eating his face because he thought the cop was a plate of waffles. When you read a story like that, the first thing that comes to mind is Florida. Always. 99% of the time when you read about a 
some crazy man. It's in Florida. It's because Florida is literally a state of denial. And it's a cliche. We're only as sick as our secrets. It's a cliche because it's true. You're only as sick as your secrets. Florida is living with all these secrets and it's driving everybody in Florida crazy. I, um, being, you know, sick as your secrets. I have a, uh, well, I don't want to, well, let's just say he's a friend from high school, which isn't true. Uh, but he and his wife are having problems with their son. That's true. He's in his early 20s. He's depressed. He won't look for a job. He's living with his aunt. He's smoking dope, doing drugs. And, you know, they present as well-meaning blue state parents. They wring their hands. He's seeing a shrink to deal with his drinking. And I want to say when they talk to me about their son, I want to say, you know, he's gay, right? But I can't. I can't. I mean, I, if I had the moral fortitude and the courage, I would say, your son is gay. I don't have the courage to say that to them because they, they'd stop talking to me. Even though they have no problem with gay marriage, they don't want a gay son. Uh, they cannot bring themselves to deal with the fact that their son is gay. It's the 21st century. And, you know, they say all the right things. They vote blue. They hate Trump. They, but they say things like, our son is so depressed and lost. And, you know, he's got a mental illness and we're trying to work with him. Your son is gay. Your son is gay. He's not mentally ill. You're just not letting him be gay. Let him be gay. That's what I want to say. Your son is gay. Go visit your son at his aunt's and just say, we think you're gay. We think it's great that you're gay. And we're going to try to find a nice man for you. That's what I want to say to these people. Your son is gay. He's not depressed. He's not an alcoholic. He doesn't need to see a shrink. He's gay, but you won't let him be gay. That's what you need to say to your son. Uh, but that requires unconditional love. And these people, you know, in America, we... Too many of us don't love unconditionally. We don't accept people the way they are. We only accept them the way we want them to be. Your son is gay. Just say that. Acknowledge it. But, you know, it would be very uncomfortable for them to... Uh, it's not what they want. Of course, it's not about what they want. It's about what their son needs. Uh, and that's really the core of... All the insanity we see in Florida, in America, and Israel. Look, you know, look at Israel right now. Uh, now, I know this is unpopular, but I, I root for Israel. I do. Uh, I don't root for Benjamin Netanyahu, but I root for Israel. And right now, there are massive protests in Israel. Doctors are going on strike. Army reservists are refusing to report to duty. Why? Why? Well, we're told, and this is what most Israelis, I think, think. They, they've convinced themselves that what's fueling the civil unrest, possibly a civil war. They're actually talking about a civil war in Israel. And what the media and what a lot of Jews in Israel are saying is, uh, well, this, this discontent is because of Bibi Netanyahu's power grab. It's all because Bibi is trying to strip the Israeli Supreme Court of what he, what he considers too much power. You know, Bibi's trying to return the power to the legislative branch. This is what it's all about. By the way, it would be nice if we actually did that here in America, what they're doing, what Bibi is doing in America. Uh, I don't know, seems more democratic when the legislators, instead of unelected judges, get to chart the course of a nation. But that's what they say is going on in Israel. And I think most of the Israelis believe that, that, you know, that uh, Bibi Netanyahu is an existential threat to Israeli democracy. There could be a civil war. 
They are fighting for the soul of the nation. To which I say, no, Israel, your son is gay. You're not dealing with the truth. You're just dealing with symptoms. Your son is gay, Israel. Let your son be gay, Israel. All this screaming and fighting in Israel right now is a symptom of denial. Israel is denying who it is, what it's become, and that leads to insanity. Israel, your son is gay. Let your son be gay. Okay, it's not about Israel having a gay son. It's about the Palestinians. They're in denial about the Palestinians. When a nation or a person denies the real problem, the real origin story, the, 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 the original sin, the problem, it fosters, it always creates insanity. It's biblical. Read the Old Testament. Societies go crazy when they deny the truth. All the arguing and fighting that's going on in Israel right now, all the disagreements, all the vitriol directed at Benjamin Netanyahu and the fascist hardliners, all of this is because Israel refuses to solve the Palestinian problem. Israel is slowly getting more conservative when it comes to the Palestinians. And as Israel moves further and further away from wanting to solve the Palestinian problem, they go into denial, they live a lie, and that creates the insanity we're seeing on the streets of Israel right now, the fighting amongst one another. The refusal to acknowledge the settlers on the West Bank are immoral and we have to deal with them. But they can't say that. It's a power grab. They're trying to undermine the judiciary branch. This is what, no, your son is gay. Your son is drinking, he's depressed, he won't find a job because he won't admit he's gay because you won't let him be gay. That's what's going on. Denial. The same way America refused to deal with slavery until it was too late and we had the Civil War. Israel refuses to deal with the Israeli settlers on the West Bank. You cannot say, and I root for Israel, by the way, you can't say we're the only democracy in the Middle East except for how we treat the Palestinians. The same way America can't say we're a beacon of hope we're a beacon of freedom, except for the slaves, except for the blacks and the Chinese. And we're a beacon of hope and democracy for everybody except for a lot of people. It makes people go crazy. It's why America is so insane. And that leads to civil unrest and polarization. Bibi Netanyahu is in power this morning because Israel has yet to solve the Palestinian crisis. This is a crisis. And because it's a crisis, because the Jews feel they're under constant threat, they live in constant fear. And constant fear is exactly what fascists, it's exactly what fascists want. It's exactly... Having Israeli Jews living in, in constant fear, it's where Bibi Netanyahu wants the population. If you have an entire nation living in fear, people will surrender not just their civil liberties, they will surrender their sense of right and wrong. When you're terrified, you surrender your sense of right and wrong. I was talking to my sister about this here in America. We've lost our sense of right and wrong here in America. I can't find an, uh, you cannot find an honest person in America because everybody's terrified. What's going on in Israel this morning has nothing to do with judiciary reform. It's a symptom. It has nothing to do with 
this pig, Benjamin Netanyahu, who had a peacemaker, a pace, they should have put a peacemaker in his heart instead of a pacemaker, has nothing to do with Netanyahu's power grab. <coughs> It is a symptom of denial when a nation refuses to uh, acknowledge that it is subjugating an entire people. It makes them crazy. But you know what? I'm crazy. You know that. You know that. So what do I know? I'm not Russell Brand. I wish I were Russell Brand. I'm not Russell Brand. I'm not charming. Nobody ever put me in movies. Women don't swoon in my presence. Women don't want to take care of me, no matter how self-destructive I am. I don't have a British accent, long hair. I don't dress like a dangerous bad boy. I don't wear necklaces. I don't gesticulate wildly while I talk about my search for eternal truths. I'm not Russell Brand. I wish I were. Uh, you know, he's a lefty, right? I think he's a lefty, you know, like Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller has long hair and uses the F word, so he's a lefty. Uh, you know, Russell Brand, look at him. He's a lefty. He's got long hair. It looks like Jesus. He curses, and he's always searching for meaning in the universe, and he would never manipulate the people who listen to his podcast. He would never present himself as a lefty, but gaslight his listeners and turn them into fascists. He wouldn't do that because he's searching for answers and he's open minded. He's one of our allies here on the left, like Jimmy Dore, because he's open minded. Uh, Russell Brand, you know, he's smart. He went to acting school and he. He's got to be a lefty because he's a recovering drug addict. He did drugs, so that, you know, he smokes pot. He's, he's got to be a lefty, and he's a recovering bulimic, and he talks about it. That's, that's what lefties do. He suffers from attention deficit disorder, and, you know, he's just like all of us, just trying to find his way in the world, and that's, he's got to be a lefty. You know, at one time, <laughs> Russell Brand was a pro-union activist. He supported Chelsea Manning. But, you know, he started doing a podcast supporting unions and Chelsea Manning, and his podcast, you know, was like mine. It's like everybody else's. You know, it just wasn't... Nobody wanted to listen to that shit. And then COVID hit. And Russell Brand discovered that if you become anti-vax traffic and conspiracy theories, you can start making the kind of money you used to make in movies right before everybody discovered you can't act and you're not funny. So Russell Brand, you know, he looks like a lefty. He quacks like a lefty, but he's a quack. And that makes him a wonderfully charming, soft entry point into fascism for susceptible listeners. He's, you know, cut from the same authoritarian cloth as Jimmy Dore and Joe Rogan. You know, I'm just asking questions and I'm angry. I'm not a fascist. I'm just angrily asking questions and trivializing the plight of marginalized communities. I'm just asking questions. Here is Russell Brand talking to a fascist, Governor Ron DeSantis, you know, there are key moments in a person's life. You get Ron DeSantis to come on your show. I know what I would say to Ron DeSantis. I know what I would ask Ron DeSantis. I mean, Russell Brand, he's just asking questions, right? So he had fascist Ron DeSantis on his show last week. And, you know... Uh, this isn't working, is it? Here we go. There you go. So Ron DeSantis, that, you know, in, in show business, they call that a get. Like, that. ooh, that's a big name. You get Ron DeSantis on your show, a lot of people are going to listen. So I was especially interested in how Russell Brand uh, would talk to Ron DeSantis because there's this Vice documentary that we've talked about. It's about 
Ron DeSantis's time as a JAG officer at Guantanamo Bay. And uh, Showtime pulled it. Showtime has refused to air this documentary about Ron DeSantis. And we are now getting reports that this documentary reveals what we've been talking about on this show, that Ron DeSantis is guilty of war crimes in Gitmo, that he was laughing while detainees were getting tortured. And Russell Brand is all about being free, right? You can see it there. His stay free. That's his, it's either about politics or a, a, a maxi pad, but he calls himself stay free Russell Brand. So you would think he'd be concerned about the detainees in Gitmo and the documentary that Showtime refused to, to air. So I couldn't wait to hear what Russell Brand, the searcher for truths, the rebel, I couldn't wait for his hard-hitting interview with Ron DeSantis. Let's watch Stay Free. That's his slogan, Russell Brand. Let's watch him grill the fascist. Ron DeSantis. In Florida recently, I was struck by the amount of pride that Floridians have in their state. You appear to be universally endorsed by the population of Florida. He appears to be universally endorsed by the population of Florida. Well, you know, he has uh, attention deficit disorder, so maybe he doesn't read. So, Russell, I'm not as... Uh, successful as you but uh, and i know you can't read you don't have the the concentration abilities but maybe you didn't know this about florida this is from the naacp russell you know uh headline from the the suppress release from the naacp russell a warning to all this is from last month florida is home to hate there's now a travel advisory for black people in Florida, Russell Brand, uh, if you weren't busy uh, posturing, uh, you would know this. Let me go full screen here. This is from the NAACP. Today, the NAACP Board of Directors issued a formal travel advisory for the state of Florida. The travel advisory comes in direct response to Governor Ron DeSantis's aggressive attempts to erase black history and to restrict diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in Florida schools. The formal travel notice states, quote, Florida is openly hostile toward African Americans, people of color, and LGBTQ plus individuals. Before traveling to Florida, please understand that the state of Florida devalues and marginalizes the, con the contributions of and the challenges faced by African Americans and other communities of color. That's from the NAACP, Russell Brand, you poser. You're going to trust Ron DeSantis over the NAACP. Well, uh, why isn't this working? Okay. There is a travel advisory by America's largest LGBTQ advocacy group. It is not safe, according to America's largest LGBTQ advocacy group, for members of the LGBTQ plus community to travel in Florida. That's a fact. You got the NAACP, you got the country's largest LGBTQ advocacy group telling blacks and people of color, you might want to be careful going to Florida. So, Russell Brand, please continue your hard-hitting interview with the fascist Ron DeSantis. What is evident, even after just uh, uh, this limited amount of time in your company, is that you are a competent orator, that you are a successful politician, that you are very appealing, that you've succeeded in Florida. Wow, that is, he just grilled Ron DeSantis. He really is a seeker of truth. You've succeeded in Florida. He succeeded in Florida. You know, I know Russell Brand is getting wealthy off conspiracy theories and 
and uh, being anti-vax. He's got millions and millions of followers. So he's got a lot of money and they're all these stupid women who want to take care of him. And so he's just he doesn't have time to read and study the issues. He's too busy searching for truths. So let me help you there, Russell Brand. You've succeeded in Florida. Okay, you succeeded in Florida. If you picked up a book, uh, if you read, I don't know, the Miami Herald, if you read anything, but you don't have time, you're too busy seeking the truth. So let's, let me just edify Russell Brand. Okay, this is from the New York Times. Uh, the steep cost of Ron DeSantis's vaccine turnabout. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, how he succeeded when it comes to uh, fighting COVID and how he's helped the people of Florida, how he succeeded. Right? Because that's what, right? What did you say, Russell? You've succeeded in Florida. Right. So this is the headline from the New York Times. I believe this is from Monday's New York Times. I know you have attention deficit disorder, Russell, uh, but, you know, maybe if you could read a little headline, the steep cost of Ron DeSantis' vaccine turnabout. Once a vaccine advocate, the Florida governor lost his enthusiasm for the shot before the Delta wave sent COVID hospitalizations and deaths soaring. It's a grim chapter he now leaves out of his rosy retelling of his pandemic response. That's from July 22nd of the 2020 of 2023 New York Times. Uh, I want you to bear with me on this because the Wall Street Journal, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch, has an editorial Tuesday singing the praises of how Ron DeSantis handled COVID. And it's complete and utter bullshit. You know, there are no hyperlinks. Anytime you read an editorial that has no hyperlinks, to back up these axiomatic statements, you know it's bullshit. So I want to correct the Wall Street Journal and the record and Ron DeSantis' lies about COVID because he's running as though COVID was a success story. So this is from the New York Times. Bear with me, please. Please stick with me. The governor now presents his COVID strategy not only as his biggest accomplishment, but as the foundation for his presidential campaign. Mr. DeSantis argues that, quote, Florida got it right because he was willing to stand up for the rights of individuals despite pressure from the health bureaucrats. On the campaign trail, he says liberal bastions like New York and California needlessly traded away freedoms while Florida preserved jobs, in-person schooling, and quality of life. Okay, so let's talk about this success story, right? Before we get to COVID, I want to help Russell uh, because Ron DeSantis you know, had no mask mandates, no vaccine mandates, and it's all about improving the quality of life. That's what he's running on. And, you know, Russell Brand says... You've succeeded in Florida. All right, so you succeeded in Florida. Let's talk about quality of life in Florida, Russell, shall we? Here we go. This is quality of life under Ron DeSantis, Russell. 20% of Floridians lack health insurance entirely, more than almost any other state. Florida has become the least affordable state in America. It is the least affordable state in America under Ron DeSantis. Inflation is twice the national average under Ron DeSantis. Property insurance costs are the highest rates in America, right? I've talked about that at the top of the show, but Russell says... You've succeeded in Florida... Yeah, you succeeded in Florida. Read a book. Uh, under quality of life, Florida teacher shortage uh, uh, with Ron DeSantis. Florida's teacher shortage resulted in more than 100,000 students without a full-time teacher. You know, instead of the don't say gay bill and banning books and uh, saying that African-American studies isn't a real AP class, maybe Ron DeSantis could get 100,000 teachers uh, for, for the kids in Florida, right? Instead of worry about transgender 
kids using the wrong bathroom? How about teaching the effing kids? Why don't you try that? Florida Department of Education grades the schools in Florida, and the Florida Department of Education says under Governor Ron DeSantis, the number of schools getting an F between the years 2019 and 2022 doubled under Ron DeSantis. But Florida under Ron DeSantis, second only to Texas in banning books, right? The schools are crumbling in Florida because they don't want to teach. They just want to ban books and marginalize African-Americans and the transgender community. By every yardstick, Ron DeSantis is a failure in Florida. But, you know, Russell Brand, he says... You've succeeded in Florida. You succeeded in Florida. Yeah. Uh, Let's continue, shall we? Florida's infant mortality rate worse than the national average. Florida is second in the nation in death rate for drug overdoses. Drug overdoses. Florida's high school dropout rate above the national average. Florida ranks seventh uh, in America in income inequality. You've succeeded in Florida. Uh, Go fuck yourself. Uh, And most importantly, Florida under Ron DeSantis ranks 44th in overall public safety. You've succeeded in Florida. It ranks 44th in public safety in Florida. The man's a fascist. He's running on law and order. It ranks 44th in America for public safety. You, you, if you, you're, you're more likely to get robbed and beaten and bullied, by the way. They have statistics that show uh, Florida is the number one state in America for bullies. Gee, what a surprise. A fascist who runs on law and order can't control the crime rate. I mean, what's the point of having a fascist in charge of your state if you can't bring the crime rate down? Okay, so let's talk about COVID because that's Russell Brand's big thing, right? He's a uh, uh, anti-mask, anti-vax, conspiracy theorist. You know, that's how you get a hundred times more listeners pedal conspiracy theories. Russell Brand's making a lot of money. Obviously, he's making so much money, he no longer has time to read and do his research. Uh, so here's the truth about COVID. So the New York Times, I originally said that they did a study of how Ron DeSantis shit the bed on COVID. While, he, you know, he, his story is, I opened up the schools. We didn't have mask mandates or vaccine mandates. We opened up the businesses and we improved Florida's quality of life. Okay, I've just proven to you incontrovertible. I've just given you incontrovertible evidence that the quality of life under Ron DeSantis during COVID has deteriorated far worse than three quarters of the states here in America by every yardstick. He's a failure. So how did he do on COVID? That's his big lie. This is let's go back to the New York Times on COVID. This is from the New York Times. A close review by the New York Times of Florida's pandemic response, including a new analysis of the data on deaths, hospitalizations, and vaccination rates in the state, suggests that Mr. DeSantis's account of his record leaves much out. While Florida was an early leader in the share of over 65, people over 65 residents getting vaccinated, It had fallen to the middle of the pack by the end of July of 2021. When it came to younger residents, Florida lagged behind the national average in every age group. So the idea is that Ron DeSantis was saying, well, you know, we're going to get grandma and grandpa vaccinated. But young people, herd immunity, let them get it. Let's see how that worked out, shall we? This is from The New York Times. That left... The state, particularly vulnerable when the Delta variant hit that month. Floridians died at a higher rate, adjusted for age, than residents of almost any other state during the Delta wave. That's according to analysis from the New York Times. 
with less than 7% of the nation's population, Florida accounted for 14% of deaths between the start of July and end of October. These are facts, okay? And I'm bringing this up because it's what Ron DeSantis is running on, and the Wall Street Journal has an editorial yesterday that just is a... They, they just copy and pasted Ron DeSantis's talking points about how Florida did so well under COVID. He shit the bed on COVID. This is from The Lancet. Uh, it's a British medical journal. Uh, be nice if Russell uh, read The Lancet, but... He's, too, he's making so much money being an anti-vaxxer, he doesn't have time to read. This is a study from The Lancet on infectious diseases. Implica and this just came out uh, last month. Implications of suboptimal COVID-19 vaccination coverage in Florida and Texas. Okay, I don't know what suboptimal means, but let me read this to you. Okay. In July of 2021, another wave of COVID-19 began in the USA at... Oh, fuck me. Why can't... Woe is me. Let's try it again. In July, another wave of COVID-19 began in the USA as the highly infectious Delta B1... The blah, 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 SARS variant drove outbreaks predominantly affecting states with relatively low vaccination coverage. Some U.S. states have shown the feasibility of rapidly achieving high vaccination coverage. Specifically, an average of 74% of adults had been fully vaccinated in Vermont, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, and Rhode Island by July 31st. In contrast, two states facing substantial Delta-driven surges, Florida and Texas, had fully vaccinated only 59.5% and 55.8% of their adult residents, respectively. So that means Florida had fully vaccinated only 59.5% of their adults, as opposed to places like Massachusetts, Maine, and Rhode Island, Vermont, where it was 74%, okay? Here we estimate the deaths, hospital admissions, and infections that could have been averted had Florida and Texas matched the average vaccination pace of the top performing states and vaccinated 74% of their adult populations by the end of July. Okay, this is more from uh, The Lancet. Reduction in deaths would have been Blah, blah, blah. Collectively, these two states could have averted more than 95,000 hospital admissions and 22,000 deaths had they reached the vaccination coverage achieved by the top five states and continued at the same pace until August 31st of 2021. But, Russell... You've succeeded in Florida. Okay. Here's a general rule of thumb. Don't get your information from Jimmy Dore, Russell Brand, Joe Rogan, or me. Read The Lancet. <laughs> Read The New York Times. Don't listen to failed actors and unfunny comedians. It, you, you end up getting killed. People die from misinformation. Uh, Russell Brand, dangerous guy, dangerous guy. People think he's an ally. He's the enemy. He's the enemy. There's a lot of money to be made spreading conspiracy theories and being anti-vax. He's a useful tool for authoritarians. Look at the smile on Ron DeSantis's face. Know the enemy. There will always be posers, people pretending they're on the left, people pretending they believe in freedom and democracy. 
but they're in the service of authoritarians. They're part of the authoritarian playbook. Look at that. Stay free with Russell Brand. The antithesis of freedom is fascist Ron DeSantis. And there's poser Russell Brand sucking up to fascism. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak. We're on the indictment watch. Any day, Donald Trump will be indicted. It was nice not talking about him this morning. Please like this video. Please share it with your friends. If you want to support me, the, the single best way to support me is by copying and pasting links to this show and sharing it through email or social media. That is the number one way to support me. I am not Russell Brand. I do not have any large organizations behind me. I'm not a movie star. I need my listeners to help me. You're all I've got. No, you know, Sam Cedar and Robert Smigel. That's it. Nobody, nobody's saying, well, let's help Feldman. So if you want to help me, please share these episodes. That's the best way. Please subscribe to my channel, please. And uh, what else? Give me a second. Uh, subscribe to my channel, like the video, share it. Oh, and most importantly, the most fun is the comments. I love reading your comments. Please comment on uh, these episodes. It is the Electoral Count Act of 1877, by the way. I keep, sometimes I accidentally say the Electoral Count Act of 1876. Anytime you hear me say the Electoral Count Act of 1876, I am wrong. It is the Electoral Count Act of 1870. I almost did it again. 1887. I, I get, I have these kind of bugs in my brain. Electoral Count Act of 1887. That's 1887. I, I keep getting that wrong, so I apologize. Uh, we looked it up. Andrew Jackson was a Democrat. Thank you for the corrections. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. I accidentally referred to him as Roger Rittenhouse because Roger Rittenhouse is one of the funniest comedians I ever met in my life. Look him up on Google. I love Roger Rittenhouse as much as I hate Kyle Rittenhouse. That says a lot about Roger Rittenhouse. So I accidentally called Kyle Rittenhouse Roger Rittenhouse. Everybody should uh, check out Roger Rittenhouse. He is so funny. Uh, so there's that. Graham Elwood, I love you. I stand with Graham Elwood. He uh, has said some things uh, about Jimmy Dore. I agree with Graham Elwood 100%. Uh, check out Graham's show. Uh, uh, he, I support Graham Elwood 100%. Check out Graham Elwood. And uh, I think that covers it. Please subscribe to my newsletter. I am stumbling back into this show. And... Uh, so I have not been able, I haven't had the energy to put out the newsletter and I haven't had the energy to do office hours. We're going to slowly reintroduce guests to the audio podcast. I uh, just haven't had the energy, but we're going to start bringing the guests back on the audio podcast. By the way, this is an audio podcast that comes out seven days a week uh, and you might want to subscribe to it on iTunes or Spotify. And we put out the audio version of the podcast on YouTube, but it's just audio. It's just audio. I think that covers everything. Thank you to the moderators in the chat room who keep the conversation 
civilized. Uh, no garbage people in the chat room. Thank you all. Once again, stay strong and protect the weak, and I will see you tomorrow around the same time.